Hey, God bless you, my friend. This is Sister Sharon. Today, I am discussing the very dangerous movement that's in most charismatic Pentecostal church groups call soaking. Some of you may have never heard of this movement, but this is where uh, those who confess to know Jesus Christ sit for hours uh, listening to certain types of music. They call it soaking. And the purpose is to, as they would say, or, or as many believe, they will bring or conjure up the presence, the presence of God. My friend, this is so dangerous. I have seen it up close and personal. I have witnessed many people that indulge in this very sensual behavior and each one of them were, for the lack of word, they were very disturbed individuals. I recall a sister. I came out of the charismatic church. When I first met Jesus Christ of Nazareth and I was struck down in my core, my very being, that I was a sinful woman and I needed a savior. And when I met Christ in a one bedroom apartment, I remember the defining moment in my life. I was born of the Holy Spirit. I never engaged in this type of behavior, even though I began to fellowship at a charismatic Pentecostal church. Everybody was so, when it came to praise and worship, that's usually where you will see certain ones that, you know, they'll quake and you'll see their hands shaking and some of them just go off into real exuberant, uh, almost violent movements with their bodies. And I, I've never seen this before. I was just born again. I, I could tell you, my friend, I had a radical encounter with the Holy Spirit. When I say radical, I mean my life changed. I immediately began to, to change the way I dressed, the way I talked, everywhere I went, uh, with everything was sifted. I just knew. I just knew what to do because why? The, 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 the motivator, the communicator, the comforter had come into my life and he began to teach me how to release um, um, being in the flesh. We are sinners. We are born and shaped into iniquity. And the Holy Spirit began to teach me how to walk in the spirit. And, and that means I'm aware of God. That's what it means to walk in the spirit. So when I came into this fellowship and I began to see all of this very almost erotic behavior, I was thinking maybe they had something that I didn't have because it, everything was just so just deep. And, you know, I, I remember many people would shake. That was the number one thing was these shaking. And, and I'm like, okay, you know, should I be doing this? You know, and you, you feel left out because I'm not feeling none of that. Now follow me because... We just have seen a turn in the Pentecostal churches, the charismatic churches, where this soaking has come in. But I remember a sister in particular, when the praise and worship was started at our church, she would Im immediately, like clockwork, go into her shakes and rocking up and down and eyes closed. And she'd just be all just, ooh, and just crying. It was very sensual and very just like, oh, like, and, 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 and you, you, you notice her every week doing this. But once I began to talk to this sister, I started thinking she got some screws loose. And I began to question, what is this? Now, I'm a baby Christian, but I'm, I know enough in my logic, in my reasoning faculty, that something wasn't adding up. Because if God is on you all like that, because that's the impression that she gave through her religious uh, wor public worship. 
I began to question, what is this, God? She, she doing all this, but when you talk to her, something is wrong with this woman. Because the Holy Spirit makes you wise. Oh, yes. He, he teaches you how to behave. He teaches you how, my friend, to, to, to rise up in the midst of crisis. He teaches you the Christ who is Jesus. And this is why, my friend, many of us, we don't realize the Jesus we're talking about is not the real Jesus. Because the real Jesus, he is the commander and chief of true followers. But in the false churches, man is in charge. And they are not ashamed to let you know because these are they that will walk around in their long flowing robes. These are they that like to force you to call their wives first ladies. These are they that force you to call them your apostle. These are they that belittle you and start calling you their children, their daughters and their sons. These are they. As I began to see God and question. One Sunday, we come in, she's down on the floor and a couple of brothers is surrounding this sister, casting out those devils. This woman was full of devils. Now I'm a baby Christian. And so God is, is, is because for me, my friend, I, I've been a very, since I have met Christ, he makes you sober minded. You, you have clear thoughts. You see things for what it is. You're a thinker and you're thinking about the word of God. You're thinking about the things that he's teaching you. And oftentimes when the Holy Spirit is teaching, friend, you do not have to go sit somewhere and listen to music for hours and hours at a time for God to show up and speak to you. Oftentimes, friend, it's without any provocation. It's just like when God spoke to Moses out of that bush. Moses was going about his daily routine. And when God is ready to speak or to reveal, you and I don't have to sit up doing all of this, working up all this central emotion. Friend, you are inviting yourself into a world of trouble. Because Jesus said in the book of John chapter four, he said, this is a wicked generation. And he went on to say, unless you people see signs and wonders, he said, you will never believe. And the reality, my friend, is that in Revelations chapter 8, 21 or chapter 21, my friend, this is very indicting. Jesus told us that those that's going to be cast into the lake of fire, hear me, my friend, this is Revelation chapter 21, the fearful and the unbelieving. See, when you really are not walking in faith, you need a sign. You're desperate for, for some type of emotional charge in your flesh. But God said, they that worship me must do it in spirit and in truth. So when you, my friend, are looking for external proof for God's presence, you have stepped outside of the boundaries of safety and faith. And many are practicing witchcraft in many charismatic churches with all this soaking and the glory and all this laying on of hands talking about they're going to impart to you they're going to they're going to birth you out oh yes they will cuz they're full of devils oh yes my friend the bible teaches us that we have an adversary Peter told us, 1 Peter chapter 5, he said, be vigilant and be sober because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he 
may devour. My friend, when you are leaning towards central evidence that God is with you, you are sending an invitation for darkness. Now, I want to share with you as I close this exhortation. When you praise and worship God, it's not for you. It's for him. And what happens, we become a partaker when we honestly worship God. See, what many of us have been taught is that praise and worship is for us. It's not. We praise and worship him because we love him. And we are grateful that he has come and rescued us from sin. And we, 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 we lift up Jesus because Jesus died on that cross for your sin, my friend. And until you have a true encounter that you are a sinner and that unless you turn from sin and repent, you will perish. You will perish, friend. And this is when the comforter, the Holy Spirit comes to comfort us that you are no longer condemned. You shall have eternal life. Then you and I, we walk by faith. And what is happening, Paul warned us about being moved by every wind of doctrine that just fly, every new movement. You just, we're just tossed to and fro, just every wind, every doctrine, every movement, we're just blown away with it. Oh no, my friend, you are to be vigilant and sober minded at all times. You do not go sit in no, your quote, prayer closet, conjuring up all this sensual emotion and many have been deceived in prayer that unless you cry, unless you work up some kind of <gasps> glory, God, <sighs> and you just working this stuff up, friend, you, you're deceived. Proof that you have met the real Jesus of Nazareth. You will not, this same young lady, that was down there on that floor with them devils getting cast out of her. She had a religious demon, religious, because religious people love to perform. That's what religion is, is performance. But when you meet Jesus, my friend, it is by faith. If I don't never pass out another uh, word of encouragement, if I don't never preach or exhort or teach I am still safe in the hand of God. I am his daughter. And I don't have to prove anything to myself by conjuring up sensual emotion. No, friend. You will know you met the real Jesus because he still makes us fishers of men. Friend, if you are not concerned about people who are lost in sin, if you are not concerned about the state of the union, the United States of America where we live, I'm an American, I live here in these United States. You're not concerned about your fellow man. You're not concerned about where they will spend eternity. You have not met the real Jesus. If you still feel condemned over sin, you have not met the real Jesus. I said condemned. I'm talking about where you have no assurance that you are safe because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ, because you're a sinner, that Jesus Christ went to the cross to bring us back into a, a relationship with the true and the living God, my friend. If you are still walking in condemnation, you have not met the real Jesus. If you are having experience with torment, you're hearing voices, you're having uh, 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 devils, sex spirits raping you, friend, you have not met the real Jesus or you are dibbling and dabbling and you have gone back into sin. You are in and out. If you are a smoker and you're constantly smoking weed and think that you could just come back to religious activity and just work up a, a, a emotional, uh, 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 um, 
rise within yourself to say, I'm sorry, God, I'm back, God. And then next week you go right back to smoking weed. Friend, you have invited yourself. Yes. You don't play with God, my friend. You cannot drink from the cup of devils and the cup of the Christ. And so when you are condemned in the soul, this is what drives people to doing these, all these sensual activities to work up their flesh because you're not born again. And that's why you need these emotional experiences, my friend. Cry out for your soul. Because one thing for sure, one of the fruits of the spirit is faith. Oh, my friend, it's a fruit. When the Holy Spirit has come into our lives, my friend, we are not condemned anymore. We have faith towards God. And we, we, we know that our works, our time of prayer, some of you, you will know you are, are deceived because everything is emotion. Every, uh, every five minutes, Jesus tell you what to wear. Jesus tell you how to comb your hair. Jesus tell you you should take the trash out. You, not. you have a Jesus, but it's not the real Jesus, friend. You're deceived. And you must repent. You must go to God and cry out for your soul. And for some of you, friend, you've been deceived by religious leaders a false Jesus. And when it's like that, you need central proof because your spirit, your conscience has not been quickened. You have not been regenerated because contrary to popular belief, real followers of Jesus, we're not in this journey by ourselves. We have the Holy Spirit. And we don't have to conjure up anything, friend. You just walk with God. You talk with God. You keep your mind focused and meditation. My friend, when you're just sitting there and you're just, you know, I want to see Jesus. You're trying to figure out what Jesus looked like. And you just, friend, you are opening yourself up. Meditation upon his word. I can meditate while I'm working on a project. It doesn't mean I'm just sitting here idle, working to conjure up, uh-uh, we, we do this thing by faith, so the word of the Lord and the warning and the caution come out of that movement, I've seen it, this jerking and head jerking, that's, that's a devil, those are demons, we, some of us know those spirits as the Kondalini spirit, Oh, friend, you messing with some dangerous stuff. If you're in meetings and the people quaking and they don't have no control over their body, those are devils. We are to be, what did I say the scripture told us? First Peter chapter five, verse eight, vigilant and sober. That means nothing controls me. So if you want to, to take scripture out of context and, and say, well, you know, uh, some people love to go find something to justify those devils. You shaking your head, jerking, and you, friend, you have devils. And you need to go cry out to Jesus. Submit yourself. James told us. Resist the devil. Stop all this sensuality. Because that's what you're doing. You're being central. You're being in the, in the flesh man. Because Satan will give you a feeling. Believe that. And you will think it is, the, it, you'll think it's Jesus. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We are to believe upon him. We are to have faith in him. We do not go, as Jesus said in John chapter 4, seeking signs and wonders. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. Danger zone. All right, my friend, I love you. Let me pray for you, Father, in the name of Jesus. 
every person that comes to hear or see this video that has been caught up in this fake soaking movement full of devils and demons, people who say that they are filled with your spirit, who are practicing all types of uh, uh, sex, sexual sins. They are angry. They are depressed. They have no victory except when they're in these groups where they are doing all of this sensual behavior saying that it's Holy Spirit. Father, set them free in the name of Jesus. Christ of Nazareth, the son of the living God, set them free that, Father, they may begin to walk by faith and not by feelings. Have mercy on us, Father. Have mercy. Have mercy in Jesus' name. God bless you, my friend. Be wise, be vigilant, and be sober in everything you do. God bless you, my friend.